Okay, let's do a monohybrid cross. Remember, all we're doing is we're taking the F1 babies that were heterozygous, heterozygous purple plants, and we're gonna cross them. So our parent phenotype is both of them are purple. Not always the case that we have the parent phenotypes the same. Parent genotypes. Again, this is our F1 generation. So these guys are heterozygous. So we can say big P, little p, and big P, little p. Those are their genotypes. Do you agree with that? Are we good so far? Now, possible gametes. This is the place where, again, imagine we've got chromosomes and those chromosomes are gonna go through meiosis. One chromosome, one chromosome carrying the P gene is gonna end up in each gamete. So what are all the possible gametes that could result from my purple parents? They're the same parents, right? They have the same genotype. So their possible gametes are gonna be the same. Well, some of them are gonna get the big P allele. Some of those gametes, half of the gametes are gonna get the big P allele. And the other half of the gametes are gonna get the little P allele. Are you with me? Do you follow? Call me if you don't. Just kidding, don't call me. The parent, the second parent, I have to change the subject really fast after I just invited you to call me. <laughs> the second parent has the same possible gametes. Do you see how with our pot, with these, now we've got four possible gametes, two on each side. And where before we were like, dude, it's so easy. Why even bother making a Punnett square? Our Punnett square is gonna help us do our possible offspring. And it's gonna help us do our possible offspring so that when we are dealing with multiple genes, we don't get lost. On one side, we put one parent. I like indicating my gametes with circles. I don't know why that is, but it just makes it easier for me to track. One set of gametes on one side, the other set of possible gametes on the other side. There is no reason to put the same gamete, like if, for example, we ended up with two, like two possible gametes that have big P's in them. Why bother putting two big P's in there? Because it's the same thing. We're just gonna put it in there once because it's all of our possible gametes. And now, now we just do the math. If this big P combines with this big P, then we get two big P babies, one P baby with two big P's. If this big P combines with the little P, then we get a heterozygous baby. If this big P combines with this little P, then we get another heterozygous baby. And here, what? If this little P combines with that little P, half the gametes from mom have little P's, half the gametes from dad have little P's, a quarter of the babies will have those two little P's combined. We now have, right, one purple plant, two purple plants, three purple plants for every one white plant. Whoa, do you see that? Or 75% of them are purple, 25% of them are white. Every one of our traits that Mendel picked and reported data on show that 
probability, that distribution, that percentage, what is that even called? I don't know. You know what I mean though, don't you? Because you're going to call me later. No, you're not. Okay, I'm going to stop saying that so we forget that that was ever said, except I keep saying it, so we're never going to forget it now. And I'm going to keep, oh dear gracious, this could turn bad. We're not done. That was one of Mendel's laws. He said things segregate. Awesome. He also said things independently assort. And you know uh, all about independent assortment. We already know how it works. It's in meiosis again. So let's talk about independent assortment because that's going to matter when we're dealing with two traits, not just one.